What's up? Today is the third Wednesday of the month, meaning today is challenge day. If you don't know what that is, don't stress. It just means we're going to be baking something that's going to be a little bit more intense, maybe a little bit more intimidating, and a little bit more interesting. So with all that said, you're probably wondering what we're baking. We're going to be making vanilla custard squares. And that's not the only name for them. They actually have a ton of different names. I actually knew they were Dutch first with this name, but I can't pronounce it, so I'm not going to try. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna just call them vanilla custard squares because that's an easy one for me to say. With these vanilla custard squares, we're gonna be focusing on precision. What that means is these things are gonna to have to be very, very precise. <laughs> these are a little bit more technical in the sense that we have to measure things. We're gonna be making a rough puff of pastry, so those layers in our dough, and we just wanna make sure everything's nice and perfect. So with all that said, let's get this big started. I don't actually know why I ran away because uh, I have to tell you what we're going to start with. So we're going to be starting with our rough puff pastry. Rough puff is a little bit easier than puff pastry, but it still takes a little bit of time. And after we're done making the dough, we're actually going to be making these flat sections for the tops and bottoms of our vanilla custard squares. So with all that said, let's get these started. For the rough puff pastry, we're going to need these ingredients, which will also be listed in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe while you're down there. We're going to start off by actually preparing our butter. So we're going to grab the seven tablespoons of butter that we're going to be cubing. And we're going to just bring that to our cutting board, cube it up real quick. This butter is not really hard. It was in my fridge and that's perfectly okay. This butter can be just really cold. It does not have to be frozen. So we're going to put this back in the fridge so it stays cold. And then we're going to grab our large chunk of butter, so the 17 tablespoons of butter, and we're going to be grating this. And this is actually frozen, so it's really hard already. And we're going to be transferring it directly to a large bowl, and we're going to try not to play with it too much because we want to keep it frozen. So we're going to grate all of it, pop it back into our bowl, and pop it back in the freezer. And while our butter is hanging out in the fridge and the freezer, we're going to grab our flour, and we're going to start making our base for our puff pastry. So we're going to need all of our flour into our large bowl, and we're going to be adding two or three large pinches of salt, we want to make sure the salt's in there because it's going to add a lot of flavor. And then we're going to start adding in our cubed butter that we had in the fridge. So this butter is not super hard. It's slightly soft, but it's been cold by the fridge. So it's still kind of squishy, but it's a slightly hard. So we're going to pop all of our butter directly into our flour. And we're going to start rubbing the butter and the flour together until the flour becomes quite coarse from the butter. We're starting to rub the butter directly into the flour so it encases all of the flour. And you're gonna have little chunks of butter throughout your flour mixture, and that's perfectly okay. That's kind of what we're looking for. And once we're happy, we're gonna create a little well in the middle of our flour butter mixture, and we're gonna start adding water directly in the middle. We're gonna be adding a couple tablespoons at a time because we don't want too much water in our batter. So I'm gonna add about six tablespoons here, and I'm gonna start mixing it up. Once I notice it's too dry, I'm gonna create another little well, add more water, continue doing this until I start to create a more of a dough, cookie dough kind of texture or bread dough. We're looking for something that's gonna to stick together like this and we can transfer it directly to our table. And once I have it on the table, I'm gonna start kneading it and pressing it together. As you can tell, it's really dry still, so I'm gonna keep adding tablespoons of water. I ended up adding about 17 in total, I believe. And I'm gonna keep pressing it together until I start getting a dough that's not very smooth at all. But that's okay because we're gonna keep continuing to work with this dough and it'll start to smooth out in the future. For now, we're gonna try rolling it out, but if you're noticing, it's not very elastic, it's very stiff. So we're gonna actually let this rest for about 10 minutes until the dough relaxes. And once it's actually relaxed for that 10 minutes, it's a lot easier to work with. What we've done is let that gluten relax, so it's gonna roll out a lot easier. So if you're noticing your dough's really stiff, just let it hang out for a moment and then you can start working with it again. Then we're gonna roll it out to a large rectangle and we wanna try to keep that rectangle form. So you're gonna use a bench scraper or something just to kind of push the sides in, start creating that rectangle form. And you're gonna continue rolling it out. I'm not gonna say a specific size. We're just trying to aim for a large rectangle. So keep working with it, keep using your pastry scraper, keep rolling it out. If you're having some trouble areas, just use your hands to kind of press it out. And once you're ready, we're gonna start adding in our frozen butter. So make sure it's really cold. We're gonna try to handle this as least as possible because we wanna keep it as cold as possible. That's what's gonna give our layers. So I'm gonna use my rolling pin just to kind of squish it down into the dough. And we're gonna be doing a letter fold. So we're gonna fold up a third of our dough. So as you can see, I didn't put any butter down there because it's just gonna go on top of more butter. We're gonna fold over the top and press it down and then repeat 
that step all over again. So we're going to roll it back out into a large rectangle like before. However, if you notice that your table is getting really sticky and your dough is getting really sticky, add a little bit of flour on the table and then add a little bit of flour on the top of your dough as well. You can add it to your rolling pin just to keep it from sticking too much. And then repeat step one like you did for the first half of the butter for the second half of the butter. So you're going to roll it out to a large rectangle, keeping that rectangle shape, adding the rest of the butter, and then folding it into your thirds like that. And we're going to repeat that one more time, except for without the butter. So we're going to roll it out to a large rectangle, keeping that rectangle shape, folding it into a letter, just like that. And we're done folding. So this is Paul Hollywood's recipe. It's the way he does it, and I followed it, and it works well. So we're just going to wrap it up, put it all nice and happy in our bees wrap. We're going to pop this in the fridge for at least one hour to get that butter really cold all over again. So. We're gonna get this in the fridge. And now we're gonna be working on our vanilla custard. So we made a vanilla custard last month for our eclairs, but this one's gonna be a bit thicker because we wanna make sure that these are gonna stay nice and tall after we're done cutting them. So we're gonna be making a thicker custard, so the recipe's gonna be slightly different, but it's gonna be following all the same instructions. So easy peasy, you already know how to do this. So let's get this started. For the custard, these are the ingredients you're going to need, which you'll also find in the description below. And again, don't forget to subscribe. We're going to be going through this quite quickly because we did this in the last month's challenge. However, if you want more step-by-step -step instructions, go ahead and check it out in the eye above. I go really into detail about how to make this. But we're going to go ahead and grab our milk, our vanilla bean pod, a pot like this, and then also our stovetop. We're going to start off by scraping the vanilla beans out of our bean pod, dropping into our milk with the vanilla bean chute bringing everything to a boil, stirring constantly. Once it's boiling, we're gonna pull it off the heat. We're gonna stir for a little bit to let it kind of hang out and cool down, and then we're gonna let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes to cool down even more. As our milk is cooling, we're gonna grab our four egg yolks, and we're gonna be whisking this for a good 10 minutes. You can use an electric mixer. We're just trying to get a nice light texture. After your initial 10 minutes, you're going to add in the granulated sugar once your eggs are starting to fluff up, and you're going to continue mixing for another 10 minutes. You can also use a hand mixer for this, no judgment, but we're going to continue mixing this until our eggs get this nice, beautiful, yellow, mellow, light texture. And you should be able to draw a number 8 in it when you kind of swing around your spatula. After you're done mixing, you're going to add actually in your cornstarch, and we're going to continue stirring in the cornstarch just until it thickens up. We're just trying to get the cornstarch completely combined into our egg yolks, and it'll be really thick just like this. Now it's time to temper our eggs. It can sound intimidating, but it's really easy. Just take it slow in the sense of adding milk into your eggs. But first we're going to move our vanilla bean. Make sure you've wrapped your towel around your egg yolk bowl so your bowl doesn't move around too much while you mix. And we're going to start ladling small amounts of milk into our egg yolks. Continuing to mix our egg yolks at all times. And we're going to continue adding milk, continuing to mix, until all of our milk has been added into our egg yolks. Lots to do in a short amount of time, but you can do it, I promise. Once our eggs are tempered and all of our milk has been added into our egg yolks, we're going to actually grab a strainer, pop it over our top of our pot, and we're going to dump our egg yolk milky mixture directly in. We're going to strain it to make sure we don't have any egg bits, milky bits, or anything else that we don't want in our custard. And then we're going to be transferring our eggy milky mixture back onto the stove because as you can tell it's really thin, too thin to be a custard, and we're going to continue cooking this until it becomes very thick. It'll be from one moment to the next, but continue cooking it, boil for one minute, and then remove from the stove and continue mixing it until the bottom cools down slightly. You're going to notice you have a very thick custard and that's exactly what we're looking for. But we're not done yet. We're going to go ahead and add in our butter, mix that in until it's completely melted and combined. Once it's combined, we're going to go ahead and transfer our custard to a bowl to cool down. However, if you're noticing that your custard is quite chunky, go ahead and just pass it through a sieve like this. That'll go ahead and break up all those chunks. But we're gonna go ahead and toss it into a bowl, let it cool for at least two hours until it's nice and cold and thick. Now let's put it together. To assemble everything together, we're gonna need a seven inch by nine inch baking dish. And we're also gonna need a piece of parchment paper. For this piece of parchment paper, we don't want any crinkles or creases for our custard, so we're going to cut the corners actually so that way it leads directly into the baking dish. Press it down into the baking dish so that we have these nice smooth edges all the way around our baking dish. And we can go ahead and put this off to the side until we need it, and we're going to be preparing also some baking trays. So we're going to need two baking trays, and we're going to be putting a piece of parchment paper on this one because we're going to be putting our puff pastry on this one. 
and we're going to go ahead and flatten this out. Our puff pastry is going to go in here, a piece of parchment paper is going to go on top of our puff pastry, and then we're going to be putting the cookie sheet on top of the parchment paper. So we're going to be weighing down our parchment paper, our puff pastry, so that way it gets really thin and flat. Now it's time to get some baking done. So we're gonna grab our puff pastry, remove it from the bees wrap, and mine's been sitting in the fridge for actually about two hours, so it's really, really cold. And we're gonna wanna go ahead and add some flour to the bottom and to the top because it's gonna start getting really sticky because the butter's gonna start to melt. We wanna kinda do this fast so it doesn't melt too much, but flour always helps. We're gonna start rolling this out into a long rectangle, however, I noticed that I actually had too much, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove half of mine. And before I even go any further, just look at these layers. They look so good. That butter and that flour, mm. But let's get back to these vanilla custard squares because that's what we're working on now. So we're gonna roll out our puff pastry to a rectangle that's twice the width of our baking pan and the same length. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my measuring tape to check this. However, you can go ahead and use your baking dish as well. So you can grab your baking dish and just pop it, grab your knife, make a little slit where the edge is. And we're gonna be printing up the edges too, so keeping that in mind as well before you kinda of cut your pastry. And you can go ahead and just use your knife, go straight down, stock in the middle. However, because we're working on precision, I'm gonna use a measuring tape, measure out the right widths and lengths for each square, cut off the edges, and make sure I have these two perfect length rectangles. I'm gonna admit, I was surprised how well I measured these out but they worked. So now we're gonna be moving these onto our baking tray we talked about previously. We're gonna be laying a piece of parchment paper on top of them, laying another baking tray right on top of those to weigh them down to make sure they're really thin and flat. And I'm also gonna be adding a weight to the top. This is optional, you do not have to do this, it just makes them thinner. We're gonna be baking these guys at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes with the weight on. Then we're gonna take the baking tray off and bake them for another 15 minutes until they get golden brown just like this. They're gonna be really hot, so let them cool completely before adding the custard between the two layers. Once our slabs of pastry are completely cooled, we can go ahead and add it directly into the bottom of our baking dish we prepared earlier. And once our custard is also really thick, we can add our custard directly on top. My custard is extremely thick. That's exactly what we're looking for. We're wanting something that's gonna stay sturdy. We're gonna grab an offset spatula and just smooth it out until it's nice and flat. Mine looks a little chunky. I'm not worried about it. It still tastes absolutely fabulous. We're gonna add a piece of plastic wrap over top of this and let it cool while we prepare the top of our pastry. For the top of our pastry, we're gonna be cutting it into serving sizes. If you were to cut this while it's on top of your custard, your custard would just kind of squirt out the sides and we don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna be using a measuring tape. You can go ahead and guesstimate if you like to, but I'm actually gonna be cutting my pastry in half first. I'm gonna cut each half into four sections about equal size. A couple of mine broke, but that's not gonna be a big deal because we're gonna be putting jam and icing on top so it'll hide all those little broken pieces that we have. But this one right here, I can test try. And for our jam, I'm gonna be using apricot jam. It's really nice with this vanilla custard and we're just gonna be warming it up in the microwave just for a couple seconds to make it really easy to spread on top of the pastry. And we're just gonna spread it around, making sure we have a nice layer of jam on each piece of pastry. Next, we're gonna be preparing the icing that's gonna be going on top of the apricot jam. So I'm gonna add like, two drops of pink icing to my powdered sugar, about a tablespoon of milk, and then continue mixing that. If you need more powdered sugar, add more powdered sugar. If you need more milk, add more milk until you get a nice thick consistency that's gonna go on top of our puff pastry. So we're gonna first add the squares on top of our custard before we add the pink icing. So grab your custard, the one that's on top of your other piece of puff pastry, and then go ahead and arrange your squares on top of your custard to make sure it fits nicely and snugly. And once you have all your squares on top of your custard, you can grab a pastry brush and you're gonna start brushing your pink icing that you made right on top of your squares. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine didn't turn out perfect, but it ended up looking really nice in the end. After you're done adding the pink icing, you're gonna let this sit for at least two hours to completely set up. 
After you've given these guys two hours to set up, you can grab your parchment paper, lift it out of the baking pan, and put it on a cutting board. Grab yourself a sharp knife and just slide it along the sides of your squares. You don't want to pull the parchment paper because you're going to pull the custard out of the squares, and that's not going to be cool. Once you have the parchment paper released from the custard, grab yourself a knife and just press it through where you have the squares on top. Those are going to be kind of your guidelines, and then you have yourself a little vanilla custard square. They're actually really cute. This is really good, and 100% recommend making it. I'm not going to judge you if you buy custard powder or if you buy rough puff pastry sheets at the store. You're not going to be challenging yourself in the same way. However, it's worth trying. It's such a good thing, and I don't think we have something like this in the US, so why not try it? Because now you get to try something that we don't have. So give it a try. I think it's delicious. I think it's worth baking, even if you do a cheap bake. And then go ahead and send me the pictures on Instagram, either the cheap bake or the regular bake, at Melissa's little Melissa's dot little bake. Nah, at Melissa's dot little baking dot at Melissa's dot little dot baking dot company. It's really hard to say. And I'll go ahead and share them on my Instagram. And that's it for this bake. That's it. You did it. You've done it. You watched it. And now go bake. Until next time, ciao!